Today marks one month of all in recovery. And let me tell you, it's been the best decision I ever made. It hasn't been easy, but already I've been reaping the benefits and it just feels so worth it. I recently did a post on Instagram updating you guys about like my journey and um, how I relapsed and how I then decided to go all in. So uh, you guys should check it out. I'll put a little link for my Instagram up in the corner or maybe it's that corner. I don't know, but I'll try and like figure out how to put a link in. I'm really bad with technology though. So uh, if it doesn't work, then it will be linked in the description box. <laughs> the first few months of my recovery were forced upon me. I really didn't even believe I was ill. My parents had realised and I was getting support from the CAMS team and they managed to weight restore me eventually after the most difficult months of my life I would say. I wasn't in school, I wasn't allowed to dance. I can barely remember it which I guess is a good thing because it wasn't a fun time. They managed to weight restore me and then I found Christmas really difficult. I was really looking forward to getting back to school because I just needed the structure of it basically. So when Boris made his announcement that we were going back into a lockdown, it hit me hard and it just sent me spiralling into a relapse because all my motivation to recover, which was being able to go to school, being able to go to dance, being able to go out with my friends, all of those motivations, they were just gone. Um, and because of Covid, I wasn't seeing CAMS in person, I was just doing like a um, Zoom call with them once a week. So it took them a scarily long time to realise that I wasn't doing okay. My therapist did eventually realise, I think this was kind of February time, and she got me in when she realised and she was like, look, we're going to have to tell your parents because you're obviously not turning it around, you're not doing well. I had a CAMS meeting, which wasn't fun because I was kind of sat there feeling very threatened, not me feeling threatened, the eating was sort of feeling threatened, surrounded by loads of concerned and angry adults and um, so in that meeting I said all the right things, I smiled in the right places and then I got back and it just kind of went downhill. It was like I think that next day that I made the decision to go all in, I basically broke down completely. I opened up to my mum about everything that had been going on since like the summer. I hadn't really told anyone about what I'd been through at all and what had caused my eating disorder. Like deep down I did know but in CAMS instead we were just kind of focusing on body image which wasn't ever really a problem for me. I suffer from trauma anorexia so after some not very pleasant experiences with a not very pleasant person. No, I shouldn't smile at that, it's kind of like a coping mechanism, you know? Someone's got their hairdryer on in the background, but I know if I don't carry on now, then I'll just completely like lose my flow and I'll forget what I was saying. So me and my mum basically stayed up all night and I was just kind of crying and I told her everything. And at that point I kind of knew that there was no going back because I let her in on all the sort of eating disorder secrets. So there was no way that I could kind of go back to that restriction because she would be able to spot it straight away. It was really difficult, obviously, talking about your trauma because you're kind of bringing up all those emotions again and the eating disorder is kind of what I use to suppress that trauma. Um, so I didn't have to think about it at all because instead I was just busy thinking about food. So I think at that point, me and my mum developed a much better understanding. I am a very competitive and very perfectionistic person and that had all kind of been channeled into my eating disorder, which is why it was kind of so rapid and it became so dangerous. When I decided to go all in, all of that kind of stubbornness, I managed to channel the other way into my recovery. I was like, right, I want to do this. I want to stick to my meal plan. And I did, and I stuck to it 100%. As you probably know, if you had to weight restore before, it is physically painful at times because it is a lot of food. That's what people don't realise. I was eating more than my teenage brother and trust me, he eats a lot. Every snack, every single time when my mum had to wake me up to drive me downstairs for breakfast, I did it. It's paid off now because I've got back to the point where I'm not having to be on that restoration meal plan and I'm back on the maintenance one. Um, I'm not just eating that, I'm eating a lot more than that. I'm just trying to listen to my hunger signals. I'm really trying to build back a positive relationship. And that's what I'm focusing on now. And that's what I see All In Recovery as, a way to kind of totally fix your relationship with your food and your body and with exercise. For me, I think that it's the only way I was ever going to truly recover because 
my cams team, they can weight restore me if they want to. I can refuse food and they can tube feed me. It's the mental change that has to come from you and I think that's what I realised. Like, if I didn't decide to get better and I didn't decide I wanted to mentally recover, I was just going to spend the rest of my life like this, in and out of hospitals, my weight going up and down, up and down. And that's not what I wanted, I wanted a future outside of my eating disorder. So that was kind of like my main motivation to go all in and actually properly commit. Because I don't want to go back now, I've kind of, I've come so far in the last month, I feel like this is the start of the rest of my life. I'm just adamant that I'm not going back to this eating disorder. So I'm really trying to take this time now to um, learn about myself and learn about my triggers and really go back to the very basic building blocks of my relationship with food and um, the trauma that I went through. Also in the past month, I kind of restarted my Instagram and obviously I started doing YouTube. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching, you guys are amazing. And I started making TikToks and the support I have got is just, it's overwhelming. Sorry, I'm acting like there's like hundreds and thousands of you, but it just, I cannot tell you how much it means to me. It is the biggest support and every morning when I wake up to your lovely messages, it is my motivation. It's like, well, it's what keeps me going basically. So thank you so, so much. Now in the UK, it looks like the lockdown restrictions are going to start easing again, which is really exciting because um, all of my kind of motivations to recover, they're actually gonna be coming back soon and I can go back to school and hopefully, oh, sorry, a little burp there. Is it just me, but coffee makes me burp? Yeah, I can go back to school and hopefully go back to dance and um, go out with my friends and, then go to sixth form. I got a place in the sixth form that I applied to, so that is super exciting. I've also done lots of steps to kind of help my body image. I wear kind of big floaty skirts. Oh, sorry, my legs aren't shaved. You probably don't want to see that. And big t-shirts. And I've got rid of all of the clothes that I know aren't going to fit me or don't fit me now in my kind of healthier body. And I've done lots of shopping. Um, I've got clothes that are actually like a healthy, my healthy body size. And um, so yeah, that's super exciting. Like this t-shirt's new. I just love shopping. My parents have been really, really supportive and I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. I'm beyond grateful for my mum and my dad. A lot of love for you guys. They're not actually watching it. I feel like at some point I do need to tell them that I'm doing all this like social media stuff. Yeah, I know they don't actually know. Cause I started off and there was like maybe 50 of you. You were like, my original girls, well, and boys, but I think most of you girls. So if you're one of those people that has been supporting me from the start, oh, hi bestie, I love you so much, thank you. But then I actually kind of was getting into the thousands and I kind of need to tell them that I'm trying to become an influencer here. Any brand deals, just hit me up. I did a bit of writing, kind of reflecting on one month of recovery and I'm gonna talk through that as a voiceover on like, some of the highlights of um, my one month all in. So I hope you enjoy. In the past four weeks, I've learned more about myself than I have done in my entire life. There is so much pressure to be something or someone you're not from everyone. Your parents, teachers, classmates, siblings, social media. You change to please others, not yourself. Validation comes from external sources rather than from within. You need someone else to be proud of you, someone else to say you look pretty. When was the last time you said either of those things to yourself? And if I told you to say, I am beautiful, right now, could you say it without feeling vain or embarrassed? There's all this pressure now to love ourselves, but how is that possible when all real acts of self-love are deemed selfish? I'm not talking about self-care and treating yourself to a new coat. I'm talking about setting boundaries and realising that you are enough, exactly as you are. Confidence is looked down upon as being full of yourself. We are sent such mixed messages. This change can't come from external influences. It has to come from yourself. Your opinions, your emotions, your experiences are the only things that can guide you to finding your true self. No influencer, no self-help book can tell you how to love yourself because we are all beautifully, uniquely different. My brain works differently to yours. I can dedicate every fibre of my mental and physical being to imitating my favourite YouTuber, but I still wouldn't be them. 
I would still have different opinions, different emotions, different experiences to them, which is why you need to focus on you. This is not selfish. This is the only way you're going to grow, to find and accept your true self. We only live once, so don't spend the short time you have on this brilliant earth pretending or trying to be anything you're not. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Every action, every decision I have ever made has led me to this point. Which is why, although parts of it have been hard, and although there have been times where I no longer wanted to be here, I have no regrets. I wouldn't change anything, even if I could, because that was the past. It's been and gone, and by spending hours speculating and analysing every wrong decision I made, I will never be free from it. After months of forced recovery and weeks of work with cams on body image, I finally took the time to understand my eating disorder. I was told how I was feeling rather than listening to myself and how I actually felt. My eating disorder was a coping mechanism. It developed rapid rapidly during a time in my life where I hated myself. The eating disorder was the drastic change I needed. It changed myself and my life, arguably not for the better. But it changed it, and that's what I wanted. Engaging in the eating disorder became a distraction from all the confusing, difficult emotions and psychological trauma I had bottled up inside of me. I didn't have to think about it when there were calories to count, meals to plan. However, when I decided to go all in, all these emotions came rushing to the surface. I had no choice to face the trauma I had experienced, to open up, to work through it. This difficult process helped me realise that it wasn't my fault, it wasn't me. I had convinced myself it was my own fault I was abused, that I deserved it, that I was unlovable. I felt that I wasn't enough as I was, that I needed to change. However, I didn't have control over my personality, what I did have control over was my body. Accepting that I'm enough has been a long process and a continual one. I still struggle with feeling like psychologically I need to change or that I'm not good enough, but I've managed to break the urge to change myself physically. When you accept yourself, the need to change disappears. And I've accepted my body. I've never felt so good about myself. I still can't comprehend it, but my love, I love my body and all that it does for me. A couple of months ago, never in a billion years did I think this was possible. Regarding the urge to mentally change, I still have a long way to go. Putting out my true self on social media, like TikTok, Instagram and YouTube, and getting such a kind, supportive, positive response has helped with this. But this is external validation, and the actual change has to come from within. I am confident that I will get there though. I want to get to a place where when bad things inevitably do happen in my life, I don't blame myself or believe that if I was different it wouldn't have occurred and then revert back to the safety and comfort of changing myself through my eating disorder. I just want to say thank you so much for your continual support. It means the absolute world to me and you guys are the reason why I get up every morning and choose recovery. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been quite a personal one, so please keep everything nice in the comments. If you don't like the video, then just don't waste your time watching my channel anymore. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be uploading every Monday, so hopefully you can look forward to that and it will help like get you through the week, because obviously Mondays are just gross. Hope you have an amazing day.